Ahoy hoy! Hello. Turkey oh. lug! Ahoy hoy everyone! How is everyone doing today? It's Sunday! It is all day long. It is Sunday all day long. Um, sometimes I wish the days weren't as long. And sometimes I really? wish they were longer. It depends on the day. It does. It does. <laughs> I'd be alright with Sunday lasting. Mm. Look how many people oh, here! <laughs> oh my goodness. Jedi <laughs> Rob Frost. <laughs> Yub nub. Indeed. Indeed. Um, so I'm just gonna do a little bit more fussing here. Uh oh, Zarakino's gonna be lurking today. M lurking. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, it's the Muppets Cup. Um, yes, I've got my Muppets Cup today. It's gonna be very cheerful. Um, we have our uh, we have our guests today. Our regular guests, Holly, Moto, and Kara, are here. And let's see. I think. Are you we think gonna we go should ahead say and... hi to everyone? Yeah, let's say hi to everybody first, and then we will invite our guests on. Okay, you want to go over there. All right, Aquamite TV is here. Brett Hooper. Hey, Brett. Uh, Brickaroo Bonsai. Uh, Bubs and Lava Bat. Hey, welcome back. Uh, Cowboy Cornado. Ahoy, Ahoy howdy. howdy. Um, we've got See You Later. Debo Bricks, a.k.a. Don, Don Brickles. Brickles. Uh, Fabufan MKE. Hooded One. J.K. Brosili, hey, how's it going? I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, Jedi Rob Frost, Joel Marbella, John Luttrell, Johnny Cat, hey, Johnny. Uh, Matthew Builds Bricks, Mini Fig Chick, Monica Berry, and, and Moto. Moto. Uh, Orange Bricks, P.T. McEwen, Patrick Wismer, Remy Baker, Shane McQueen. Oh, that's a new Shane. Yep. Hey, hey, how's it Shane. going? Um, Smoke Up Johnny, W.G.J.L. Builds, Wilfred, Wilfred. Bonsoir. Uh, Zach Highmark, and, and the calming influence, Kim oh, Zarakino, <laughs> the non-anxiety-inducing name at the end of the of the list. Um, so there we go. And Alex twenty three. If I missed that one at the beginning, how's it going? I, I don't think. Other than a little pronunciation, I don't think any of the names in that list are anxiety-inducing. No, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. I do. As we've I talked you. about before, if we get to the bottom of that list and her name isn't there, I just uh, I feel like I can't continue. Yep. So, um, and of course, seconds go. before the stream, computer land started getting weird, but we're so glad you're with us on <sighs> Facebook and YouTube, whether you're chatting or lurking. So, um, let's see. Oh, We've we have got... a thumbs up for your shirt. It's one of my favorites. Oh, the shirt. Yeah, it is. It is one of my best shirts. The many moods say. of Vincent Price. <laughs> the many moods and characters of Vincent Price. So, um, real, real quick, I just wanted to let everybody know. Thanks, Monica. Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know that we picked, we went through, and it was very difficult. We went through mm -hmm. the six... Or we went through all of the builds from the two-week build, and we picked out what we thought was our, what we felt was our favorites, six of our favorites, including, yep. and we included ones that people reacted very strongly to in the, um, in the chat, yep. and I just wanted to uh, let you know that I put up a form where you can go and vote out of the six for your favorite one, and whichever one wins, we're gonna give a prize away tomorrow, and I don't know what the prize is yet, but we're gonna figure it out, and it's gonna be awesome. I'll just you tell get you that. Um, but I did want to show you here. Uh, let me add this on. Boop. Uh oh. Not that, that one. That didn't work out too well for me. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's because this has to go away. Boop. There you go. Okay. All right. Trickybricks.com slash two week vote. That is where the voting form is. Um, you can go to our website. Uh, where I did not, unfortunately, <laughs> get this done ahead of time. And that's trickybricks.com, um, right? Yeah, just like it says right there. Trickybricks.com slash two-week vote. And I'm going to go, because I want to kind of, I just want to show you real quick who our finalists were for our contest. And we're going to go to our interweb here real quick. The interweb. <laughs> interwebs um okay so here is the form it's actually embedded into the article so you can just go right to the article and vote um we've got the angler fish by legador which was amazing was and lit up and i'm sorry i can't put all of the photos we've got action corgi i named it that sorry <laughs> <laughs> the name is action corgi um by debo bricks um we have the Tricky Bricks Clubhouse by Rob Zaccardi and the Zaccardis. 
the Zuccardi clan. We've got the airship by Cornado. All right. And the Tricky Lug Tribute by Patrick Wismer. And Home by Ms. Slow Brickta. So these were all of the, those were there. There you can, there's your little vote, multiple choice vote uh, that you can go. Um, I know there's a lot of good ones. Uh, there's many so many chicks, good so ones. So many good it ones. It was tough to narrow it down. It was tough to narrow and it down And there's a lot six. of good ones that didn't make it to the list too. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, I know it was, it was tough. But there's lots of good things up there. Um, and, uh, yeah, so you can head on over there to do, to do your voting. Um, I think that we find, I think Minifig Chick put the link in and I'm also going to go ahead, uh, in the chat and I'm also going to go ahead and just leave this little, little business down here at the bottom. And we're also going mm -hmm. to allow people to vote through tomorrow's episode. So at the end of tomorrow's episode, um, oh, right. we will, that's when we will announce the winner so that we can give more people a chance to vote. And what's happening tomorrow? What, tomorrow? Well, tomorrow and all next week, I'm going to be out of town working on a theater. And um, we're going to have guest stars. Yes. Including yes. tomorrow. Yes, so tomorrow, Christopher Coster is going to be here doing an intro to BrickLink Studio. So this is going to be very exciting for anybody who has ever um, wondered about studio, how it works, how to get started. Christopher is going to be here uh, showing us how that all works. So basically and, an intro, uh, you know, it'll be a, like all of our other ones. It's going to be a beginner's intro to BrickLink Studio. And if you don't know what Studio is, it's a way that you can build digitally. Pre-plan your builds or just make final builds digitally. Yeah, so we did, um, so, and actually if you've seen a lot of Christopher's work, especially the stuff he's been posting lately, he's been posting these amazing, like, large size versions of Lego bricks made out of Lego. Um, and they are all done digitally, and so he's gonna, and he's really good at it, and he's actually an architect also, so he's going oh, to cool. be, he's gonna have, I'm sure, a lot of interesting input. So that'll be tomorrow's show, um, and again, uh, at the end of that show, we mm -hmm. will, uh, announce the winner of the two-week build, so don't forget to vote. Trickybricks.com slash two week vote. And um, our Queen of Links, uh, Minifig Chick, Kara, I'm sure will be, uh, or I'm going to ask if you wouldn't mind, just every once in a while posting that link up into the, um, into the chat so that people get their chance to vote. So um, really looking forward to, to seeing um, how this turns out. Oh, and there's a link to Christopher Coster. And there's his Instagram. And then, yes, and there's Christopher's uh, IG. So there you go. Okay, JK, we'll see you later. Thanks for stopping by for a little while. Appreciate it. Good to see you. Hmm. Okay, there we go. All right. So uh, let's see. Let's. Uh, why don't we invite our guests on? Oh yeah. Um, and they we can join us then... in some of our features. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um. Oh, All right, nice. so uh, we have our regular guests. Holly is here. Moto is here, and uh, Kara, Minifig Chick is here. Hi, everyone. Hi, we are everyone. gonna we're gonna put in our things, and we're gonna hope that we have volume from you. Um, you know how this always goes. Check. I can hear you. Let's see if everyone online can hear you. No, I don't think we're hearing you. I'm gonna fix this again. Uh, Zoom be right back. Oh, it's that check. Well, I'm so glad to see you all. I can hear you even if no one else can. Mm. A lot of check boxes. Dude. There are check boxes inside of check boxes. Uh, I can hear you, Moto, but I can't see you. Yeah. Okay, okay that sounds we'll good. Okay, we'll see you in just a minute. But, but it... Okay, yeah, nobody's, nobody's hearing you, and I'm, it's being uncooperative. Oh, yeah, so, the little check boxes aren't coming on. So please stand by. Imagine this is a television commercial with a wonderful 
4K graphic of Lego bricks spinning by as we get things set. Okay, let's see. Any any volume now? Maybe Check. you can hear me too? Yeah. Maybe not? Well, I can well, hear you out of our speakers. Yeah, but they'll not be able to hear of... that, but it might feed back. Yeah, I'm doing my best here, folks. I'm really sorry. Can they hear you oh, guys? Oh, there they are. Look. How about now? We're so oh, close. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. No, that you're he they're he unfortunately what's happening is they're hearing you through our speakers. Oh. Which would be pretty good, but then I think we could feed back and everyone would yeah. find that really unpleasant. Yeah. But I thought you were there with the headset one. Like we want How about now? Testing, testing. There about we now. go. That's what I'm talking That's about. That's what we're looking at. That's what I'm talking about. Is it For a better? moment, the audio was oh, good. Yes, yes. Smoker yes. Johnny yeah. says yes. It looks I like can it's hear. in. It looks like Great. it's in Looking mono, good. but um, yeah. Unfortunately, um, this is a big pain. <laughs> well, mono's okay because there's only one of each of them. Right. Um, we're doing we're doing our best here. Yeah, it is very <laughs> unpredictable software, um, but uh, only I best think is the... good enough. I think the build and chat portion, uh, or the chat portion, is about to happen. Yeah, there we go. So there we go. Yay, um, Joel. I go. wish. I Hello. Wish, Happy Sunday. Uh, I wish that writing down the settings would solve this, but unfortunately, that is not something that happens because it changes every single time. Um, I know if Peter Hornberger was here, <laughs> he would have something to say on this subject, and I know yeah. Kim probably does too. It's. Um, very very stressful i think that that's it, awesome <laughs> if anyone out there who writes this software is listening <laughs> please include a safe yeah. settings file right? really it's safe settings yeah it's not it's not hard now do i have to stop sort do i have to stop sorting now that everybody can hear all my, <laughs> my uh, yeah, well, no sorry. that's fine no that's we fine. we encourage engagement with the lego brand building blocks yes um, so I guess we'll wait. Are we waiting for, well, I guess we're waiting, waiting for Moto to come back. Hey, Jedi Rob Frost, we'll see you yeah, later. Yeah, Thanks Moto's for stopping by. Died, so oh, his camera yeah. died. Yeah. Got it. See, well, we could it's start monsters. I think everybody has a bingo already. I know. <laughs> it's the trifecta. I know. You know, I gotta say, I consider myself pretty good me. with tech and I've been working with it for, I mean, working with mm -hmm. this program for a long time and yet... Um, it still manages to flummox me every single time. Oh, I think you have a pen, minifig okay. chick, do you? We do. I'm like, um, what could this I be? I see the back Let's of see. it. It looks to be a real, honest to goodness, Disney pin. Let's see what you got. I'm feeling oh, thanks, just Shane. warm and cozy and happy, so. Oh, Yay. I know where you got that. With honey. <laughs> thanks, Shane. <laughs> yes. I. I love poo. How can I you almost, not love I poo? I almost picked a poo pin. It was one I had in my hand, and I put it back. So. And and just for anybody who I maybe isn't was... maybe isn't looking at the screen right now, we're talking about Winnie the Pooh. Um, <laughs> just you know, just letting you know. Um, just in case. Winnie the Pooh, right? So, uh, so Holly, have you got something? Have you got something for us? Yeah, I decided I was not in the mood for poo. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ready? All right, you're all. We're all good. Bam. Oh, oh ka, very cool. Thank you, yeah. Shane. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's great. <clears throat> very, very nice. Watch out for those coils. He likes to hug. One of my favorite, one of my favorite movies. Oh, Jungle Book, really? Interesting. Mm -hmm. I love that. All right. Yep, yeah, I think that's the one that got the most mileage when I was a kid. That that and like Sword of the Stone and Robin Hood were like my constant rotations. Oh, right on. I wow, Sword in the Stone. Hood. Interesting. Yep. Uh, that yep. one's love that, it. that one's a uh, or no, not that one. It's the it's the Black Cauldron that is that's troubling. <laughs> like, I don't know if you've ever watched it before, but it is like the most not Disney Disney movie. Oh, um, yeah, my that's actually my daughter's favorite Disney movie. Right, because Nobody. that's the way that well, because that's when Don Bluth came and kind of like tried to shake things up, and then it went so poorly. They were kind of like bye, and he was like I'm out, and then he went on to do all of those, um, The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings uh, movies, mm -hmm. and a bunch of other different stuff. Do you know, did he work on heavy metal? 
Do you know? Oh, I don't know. Don Bluth. Because I'll tell you, I was. <laughs> we like were. We were watching. Uh, a new show on Netflix last on Netflix, night, yeah. an anime which we don't usually watch, an anime called Blood of Zeus, because we're really into um, to the mythology. mythology stuff, and um, it had a very, I mean, it was very, very obviously anime, but it also um, really reminded me in some places of heavy metal. It had that like the kind close-ups of close-ups of the characters, yeah, that really outrageous and kind of gory, like really out there but it's um it's beautiful and if you have a chance to watch it yeah blood of zeus uh, and secret oh. of nim too yes the uh, fabu fan that was also oh, yeah. a yes for me it's one of my favorites too yeah hi moto viewers hi moto hello how's it going moto no moto oh uh, it's better with no, certified yeah, reboot evidently. microsoft <laughs> certified reboot works every time <laughs> very good hey, oh my mom's here. here hi mom how's hi, it going mom, please Hey, um, I have a pin today. This is oh, one of oh, my yeah. favorites. Go I'm going to bring this one back again. This is the monorail, yeah. just moving right along. Very cool. Moving right along. Oh, I love that. Can I say how much I love that song? Um, and I can play it on the ukulele. I love that song so much. All if right, let's, I... hear the song. let's hear it. What did you say? Let's hear it. Oh, that one. Uh oh. Oh no, I can't. We'll get we'll get uh we'll get uh axe shut down. The whole channel just shut down. So yeah. Oh. Can't do anything wah, like that. Wah. Although like although it. I gotta say Boone has like a whole thing where he sings songs all the time. <laughs> Nobody dinged us when we did the uh um the parting glass, so, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, so the so the usual rule of thumb is if you play an exact recording, the algorithm can match the DNA of the song exactly and shut you down. If you play your own version, it won't match. And then on TV, usually if you're, as long as the song is less than 30 seconds, that's the legal limit in general. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, there you go. Huh? Um, Brad uh, Hooper, yeah, the monorail. I don't know why they haven't brought it back as, a, as sets, really. I mean, I know that's an old topic. Maybe they break easily. Oh boy, here we go. Yep. It's a... yep. Get ready. I'm with you, Brett. <laughs> um, so, and then here is I'm I'm uncharacteristically wearing a Star Wars Luke. pin today because I love yeah. this Luke Skywalker. Oh, that's to say he's very tan and I don't very think... feathered hair. I don't think that. Very. I don't think that he was ever that tan, despite the twin sons. You... Yeah, it makes you wonder if he's on a twin sun in a desert. Why was he? I mean, they must have some serious sunblock in that in that weird uh, blue milk. <laughs> in you know? blue milk. <laughs> oh, did you? By the way, did you know? Um, I was actually. I think maybe it was New Elementary because they do all that stuff. But I was looking at the. Um, they have. <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> remade the graphics, on a couple of the. Um, of the classic prints. So now the milk carton used to have a cow on it and now it has a glass of milk on it. Yep. Which is I interesting. That. Oh, <clears throat> that's probably because of, um, you know, it's, like my son, he's lactose intolerant, so he has to drink almond milk. Well, from well, there Things is like that, that, but what I understand though is that is specifically, that was specifically done for Star Wars for the blue oh. milk Luke Skywalker Huh. minifigure that came out. I think it was a poly bag or maybe it was a giveaway. But it is now, from what I understand, a permanent change. Um, and wow. prob probably fueled by that as well. But there you go. So it no longer That's has awful. a cow. And I also saw one of the design, one of the Lego designers um, was super excited because he's like, I don't drink cow's milk. So I was really excited to have like this milk now. Um, yeah, dropping the knowledge, guys. Yeah, so there you go. Um, that happened. That's a thing that happened. So, um, so speaking of Lego news, oh wait, are we gonna do stickers? Anybody sure. else got stickers? Oh, okay, man. we can do that. Okay. Oh, remember, you don't have to have stickers. It's never a requirement. I love everybody no, always. I love that. It, first of all, it's been seven months and everybody acts surprised every time. I always forget. <laughs> no, I'm right. It's like you in audio settings. I'm constantly forgetting. I should have skipped note or something. It's like... <laughs> That's I'm just, I'm playing with you, but that makes me laugh. Um, all right. And, uh, all right, so who wants to go first? I'll go last. I'm going last. Okay, Kara, okay. we'll go, you can go first, okay. and then we'll go after Kara. So this is this cute little set from, um, Aurora's Forest Cottage, the new one with the, 
Um, oh, with the with the, uh, the mini, mini doll, doll Maleficent. Yay. Very cool. Okay. And here are the stickers, which I have not applied yet, but they're adorable. I love this little carpet. And oh, and bed. the bed with the with the peeled back sheet. Oh, I yeah. think I think my favorite though is the shelf with the book open on it, with the cookbook and all the little yeah. ingredients. And then I love that the pink and blue dress designs. Is and great. of course, the three sisters. Yes. Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether. Yeah. Very good. good. It's a good one. Nice. All right. Cheerful. Uh, let's see who we'll go. We'll go next. Um, here we go. All right. Well, ours goes sort of with yours, Kara. Um, this is uh, from set 41054 from 2014. It's 8 by 12 studs small, and it's Tiny. Disney Princess Rapunzel's Creativity Tower. Oh, wow. Um, it has um, 287 parts, two figs, including Flynn Rider and Rapunzel with bows and a tiara. There, that's in focus. That's a really cute sticker with the trees and the... Yeah, right. That's Here, to be I'll like turn a it. Painting in the set or something. Yeah, she has. I think she had. She, she does painting of the yeah. of the lanterns mm -hmm. being released. Cute. And then you've got all that extra mirror backing. All yeah, the mirror backing. A lot of and it. look at those cool curtains. Yeah, those yeah they're curtain long stickers like are hair. awesome. I like how the curtains can be something else. They could be feathers. They could be. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's a there's lots of use for those, and yeah, there's tons of extra mirror on there. So, there you go. Rapunzel's creativity tower. All right, Rapunzel's creativity tower. Who's next? Uh, it must be me by deduction. <laughs> right. Yeah, because Holly's going last. Very good. So this um, is a speed champion set. Very nice. And as you can guess, it is a Mini Cooper 1967 Mini Cooper S Rally set. Wow. And like any speed champion set. Even though the cars are itty bitty, you get ten thousand trillion stickers to apply to every. Oh, yeah. Whoa! They're exciting little cars. Very nice. A lot of those borders. I love the checkered flag. What are the two next to the word mini? Are those like supposed to be photographs or something? I believe so. And if I turn it the correct way, pardon oh, me. Oh, there they are. They are the television feed of the Mini Cooper Rally Race. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh nice. <laughs> Very nice. I like that. Leaving them I in just the dust. got this because I think it has some mech potential, so I'm I'm channeling oh, my internet yeah. mm. on that one. Very good. Very good. Yep. Nice, nice. rings, Moto. Oh yeah, that's that's me. <laughs> 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 Always have significant rings. All right, Holly, are you ready? Yes. Okay. okay. This sticker is a is applied. Oh my gosh, my dog is getting into so much mischief. She's ready for LCT. Yay, okay. Skittles. <laughs> no, not gay. She's being a troublemaker. Okay. Ooh, <laughs> um, Skittles. So the sticker's been applied, and technically it's not Lego. Um, uh -oh. it was, yeah, I know. So this is not something that I condone nor endorse. <laughs> <laughs> We're not dogmatic. But at one point, I was very curious, um, like when Lepin was kind of first a thing, I was very curious, right? And the only reason I bought it, well, there were a couple of reasons I bought this set. So it was a Lepin Millennium Falcon set, and this was after, like long after the UCS one was reti retired and before it was reissued. So I got, a, you know, a clone of that original UCS Millennium Falcon, mainly for this. <laughs> And then I ended up selling it. I the sold all of sticker. it, but I, but I kept, I kept this one part of it, which, if you'll notice, the plaque says "Star Wieners." Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is totally worth it. I'm glad that you. That is that. awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh no my one, god! No one can follow Star Wieners. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this was worth it. This was worth the entire price of it. Like, totally. Okay, so and I gotta, I've gotta say that like oh my I, gosh. <laughs> Star Wieners. I gotta say if you've ever really, if you've ever looked close at the, um, at some of the names. Okay, so the the companies that rip off Lego, when they do the names, they're always like bat, bat yeah. crap crazy, like yeah, just yeah. completely off. 
Because I remember the one that I think is the there's one that's a particularly egregious that I am unfortunately can't remember it, but it's a Harry Potter one, and it was like justice wizard something something it was really it's okay. really weird and if anybody can find it um it's yeah it's, it's super weird i know like i don't want to buy any of that crap you know but at the same time i really want those little keepsakes <laughs> well it reminds me from this it reminds me of the 70s of course when star wars was out and the, and it was super popular and everybody was trying to rip off star wars like oh, my everybody husband has a bootleg a star wars boot bootleg collection in fact justice i think this is one that talked me into buying this <laughs> that was her. justice uh magician yeah. justice magician i knew it was <laughs> something like that justice magician i want that's i want that to be my superhero name the yeah. justice magician <laughs> Yeah. It can be. It should be. <laughs> yeah. And I would. Just and I would. Just magicians. And I would dress like the. Um. I would dress like the. What's the? Oh man. What's his name? Oh, tuxedo mask from. Um. From. Mm -hmm. uh, the Sailor Moon. That would be like my. That would be like my whole thing. <laughs> Justice Wizard tuxedo mask. I went to it. Yeah, Legos like that. They didn't think of it first. Hi, <laughs> bye, mom. See I'm you pretty later. Sure, we have at least one Disney pin that, if you look closely at the back, it's called a Dizzy pin. Yeah, the, yeah. There's yeah. A, there's some of them that are definitely yeah. I I got one that said Disney Lan with no Disney D. <laughs> so, it's like you know. Oh, all right. You gotta get yourself to some Disney Land. So Rob Zaccardi in the chat says, there's a good build challenge. Build a fake theme. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's never awesome. Never like a theme, but should have been. Munched themes. Ridiculous. Bye, yeah. Chris. And it, I'm still, I'm dying over Justice Magician. That's killing uh, here's me. Here's another good one. Okay. Uh, so their version of the NES is called Movie Joker. <laughs> <laughs> what? What is that? Sense. What is that's even? Thing. What is that? Well, that's almost as absurd as Donkey Kong. <laughs> <laughs> well, Donkey Kong, which of course, you know, I know we've told this story before, but you know, of course, Donkey Kong was the um, was a mistake in translation. So it was oh, supposed really? to be it, yes, it was supposed to be Monkey Kong. And then when they tr when they translated it somehow because <laughs> because when you have a picture of a giant ape you of course would just assume that it's called Don uh, Donkey Kong, but anyway they had already printed up all of the stickers for the sides of the arcade cabinets, <laughs> and spent who knows how many bazillions yeah. of dollars on it as Donkey Kong, and they were like, oh, well, all right, it's Donkey Kong now. And they just like, <laughs> that's how it happened. Yeah, I mean, I could see that being like a misprint or something, because it's just the difference of one letter. I don't... Yeah, yeah no, it was I, a uh, weird translation thing. I never looked it up, but I always wondered why on earth, where the donkey came from. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's where. Hey, Steve Parmley's here. Hey, Steve. Hey, Steve. Steve. Um, so yeah, can you believe that? Um, Monkey Kong, Donkey Kong, and then Too you much. know, and I, I mean, can't we imagine can... the embarrassment of whoever hits send on that note. Out to <laughs> I know, players. and he's well, not a monkey well, anyway, right? Isn't they he probably an... mailed yeah, send or well, maybe well, faxed I mean, it. Right? Yeah, he's an yeah he's an ape. But when you think about you know that it was created by a Japanese company and they couldn't call it King Kong, so what was the next like best thing? Monkey is a monkey. Monkey Kong sounds great. And I'm sure it probably sounds way better in Japanese than it does in English. Um, but, um, yeah. And, it, and of course, we could go down a whole other rabbit hole about the E.T. video oh. game. Which, by the way, if you've never, like, done any research or read anything about the, um, about the E.T. video game, it is, it's an epic tale that ends... I, I had it. Oh, you my, had my it? Brother. My brother Did... and I had that, and it was the most unplayable piece of garbage ever. Oh, it was the worst. So the E.T. video game, Atari 2600, the movie had come out, and they rushed it through. And it was one guy. Like you do. It was one guy. So they rushed it out before, but to get it out in time for the movie. And I don't even know that, like... Um, it's just, it's, oh yeah, yeah, they talk about, about it on, uh, High Score. There's a really great, mm -hmm. uh, Netflix documentary called High Score that, um, actually a bunch of people I know are in, 
Um, and you should check it out because there's a lot of really fun stuff in there. But yeah, so then it all ended up in a landfill. And somebody actually, and then that was like the rumor forever was that they were all in a landfill somewhere. Oh, I remember hearing about that. Yes, and then somebody actually went and like got it, you know, like pulled it, pulled it out. And one of the worst parts of it was it was really easy in, in the first two screens to, for E.T. to fall down a hole, and he didn't have the power yet to, like, fly out of the hole. So if you got <laughs> stuck in the hole, oh, then no. that was it. That was the end. You were done. <laughs> you literally walked to screen two and fall down a hole. <laughs> that, was, that was my experience with Minecraft. At that the start. Awesome. And I was like, wait, six-year-olds are playing this. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so I just turn off all the bad things that can happen and stroll around. Yeah, build-only mode. Six-year-olds yep. do, too. <laughs> yep. Oh, and I got, and I think I, I know I've talked about this before, but you know, my the hugest. Now I know a lot, for a lot of people, the ET game was a huge disappointment. My huge disappointment, well, actually, Pac Man was probably the most disappointed anybody ever was in at that time in a console game because it was nothing like like every you you bought it thinking you were going to be able to play the game like on the um you know like it looks in the arcade and it was nothing like it and then there were the ripoffs there was disc man and like, it was like a bunch they were really awful but the worst most disappointing one for me personally was haunted house i was so excited our friends had haunted house i had the the i had the we had gotten the atari and maybe one day um, I'll get my mom to send it, but there's a picture of me and my brother as kids on Christmas Day, 1970, um, <laughs> holding up very excitedly the Atari 2600. Um, so I was like, oh, Haunted House. I got to play the Haunted House game. Of course, me, creepy kid, right? We get it. And it is literally a completely black screen with two googly eyeballs <clears throat> that just like, look in whatever direction that you happen to be going like that is the game and you do go in and out of like rooms and stuff but you can't see any of them because it's black and you're just eyeballs and i have never been so disappointed oh i was so upset <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's i still, really I still have our atari but there's only like so See, lego doesn't disappoint like that no, Lego no, doesn't. Even if like you that. got a set that you didn't want, you can still build stuff you want out of it. Right, right. Unless it's like all orange or something. No, if it's <laughs> all orange. We got one up. of those play boxes with with a ton of orange trapezoidal pieces with studs on the angles. And if anybody and I can't wants them, attach anything to it, you can have them. And, and yeah, if anybody wants them, you may have them because they are they're in that yep thing. It's really, I don't know, it's its a huge amount of a useless, someone knows a thing to do with this. Like maybe a hood for a car or Moto something. Moto would know what to do. That sounds, okay. that sounds like a build challenge He's looking to for me. it right now. I, I bet I'm Orange would like to Uh-oh, we lost <laughs> all of the, um, we lost the chat, Flynn. What do you mean we lost the chat? I, can't, I see it. I can't hear them. Wait, you guys can't Their hear Their headphones ran out or something. Uh, why, can you hear them? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know they can all hear you. We just can't hear you. Mm. Here, yeah, can so you I change know. to these? Talk about useless parts. So that's gonna mess everything up. Yeah. Well, now we can talk and they oh, can't hear well, us. So um, what should we, what should we oh, coordinate that will freak them out? About? Oh, you watched Ready Player One yesterday, but it was better. Absolutely. So y'all can still hear this. Holly and them, right? We just can't. We just can't hear them. So I'm gonna ask Holly and uh, Moto and Kara. To have a little chat while I figure out why we can't hear you anymore. So okay. what? Which would be what awesome. Could we <laughs> what could we coordinate that we could do in unison that would completely freak them out? Could we just like Sometimes walk the off mouse camera? Changes things. Yeah, we're just all gone, and they have no idea. There, there, they're back. Um, no, we can hear you now, but then, but now they can't hear you. Oh, good. So it just keeps the day just keeps getting better and better, y'all. <laughs> Well, Skittles is getting really there we go. Here, so we got we have about three minutes to work it out. No, it's okay. It's all sorted out now. Very good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Um, Kara, look what has become okay. of your box that you gave me. Oh, oh my so goodness. Uh, right? I just keep playing with it and adding been, things to it It's every been day. bedazzled. <laughs> it has. It yeah, has them. That's something a small art director would do is just layer it with stuff. Yeah. yeah. He's really good at that. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. I like that deep did detail. Did I ever show you? Where... A, did I show you the sop with camera? I, I yes, stored? you did. Remember that? that? That was so cool. It's insane. It's still together. <laughs> it's on display amazing. out there. Pretty cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I gotta tell you. That orange trapezoidal piece that we're talking about is so terrible that it's not even with our um our other no, bricks. No, I, like, I think I, it's in in deep storage, but it's like a. Oh, is panel. that the weird panel shape with like yes. studs on the side? It's an orange yeah. panel that's shaped like a trapezoid, and then has studs on three sides, including the 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 the, the, the slanted sides. It's the, the angle, worst. Yeah. No, it's but horrible. I don't know how to engage anything with it other I'll find than it orange. Like, be dazzling. If it's got it. studs, it can be incorporated. Well, I'm sure it's oh, just um, you know well, it's well, you're very welcome it's to. yeah you can <laughs> you're welcome yeah to orange it. you can have them all. <laughs> uh, orange, um, they're the worst. Like, I couldn't give them you, away. Like I was embarrassed to even put them in like a little grab bag of parts because they're so terrible. Well, you never want to do the want want prize on on dirty brickster. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, yeah. sorry. Hi, here's these pieces you can't use. Oh. Let's ask the chat. Is the chat familiar with what Dirty Brickster is? Because I am, but I don't know if everybody else would. Oh, that oh, would be good. Um, it's fun. Yeah, it's like an elephant. It's like an elephant gift exchange, basically. Yeah, it's basically a white elephant gift exchange. There's a there's a limit, and then you either get a set or parts that you have that equal like the amount of whatever, like twenty dollars or whatever, and then you do a little. Ex or if you watch The Office. It's called. They he calls it a Yankee swap. So if you've ever watched The Office, and Yankee you, swap. the Yankee swap. That's what it is. <laughs> um, so everyone buys something of of that amount and wraps it so you can't see them, and then you all bring it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's so. how I got that uh, Lego towel from Japan. That was from Dirty Brickster. From my love. I've gotten uh, some cool. I've gotten some cool Dirty Brickster stuff. I've also gotten some, <clears throat> some stuff stolen from me. I will tell you the worst. <clears throat> the worst thing stolen from me ever was by a Lego designer, and I was so <laughs> upset at first. Yes. And then he was so sweet. Well, because we made so it was Elia Gottlieb who worked on the the Queen Whatever set, and and you've probably heard this before because I only have three stories. But anyway, we had um we had be, you know like become acquainted over the point, and he showed up like he was great. I gotta say like. Um, for a Lego designer, he came in and, like, played the games and, like, did everything with everyone, did contests. It was really fun. So he um, he designed the Queen Whatever set that has, like, the banana and the little princess. Oh, banana. It. Okay. Uh, yeah. And so it was in the swap, and it was going around, and I got it. And it was towards the end. And I was so excited. I was so excited. I was like, yes, because a bunch of stuff had gotten taken from me. I was like, yes, this is the one I wanted. I want this. I'll get Ilya to sign it for me. It'll be really fun, blah, blah, blah. We come around to his turn, and he takes it from me. <laughs> he stole it from me, and I was like... <laughs> and I was literally aghast. And I was like, you you can get those. And he says, but I don't have one. He's like, I designed it, and I don't actually have it. And I was like, okay. And of course, I didn't have a break meltdown i didn't have a little baby fit but i was just like wow what a jerk move and then the but then i ended up with a vintage harry potter set which i was super happy about the one with the glow in the dark snape oh yeah and i was like okay that's fine and then we get outside and i go up i come up to talk to talk to him to tell him you know no hard feelings or whatever like that was funny and he was autographing it, and he turned around and gave it to me. He's like, I wanted to make sure that nobody else stole it from you, so I took it so I could autograph it and give it back to you. Oh, <laughs> See, there you go. It was there so you go. So sweet. I had a feeling that's where it was going. Yeah, it was so sweet. But in the moment, I was like, what is happening right now? <laughs> so... He pulled a yeah, he pulled a Keanu Reeves on you. He he did the right yeah. thing. Just just pranked you really hard that oh awesome. yeah he Watch did out for those well, guys they are pranksters all of them yeah he's <laughs> oh. he's pretty hilarious okay well i guess actually it's that certain special that time, time today it? everybody it's wow we are flying today we've got it's going by quick all right everybody here we go it's that special time please welcome our special guest Hi, yay Hi. logan it's Hi. Logan cookie time. 
And thank you, Hornburgers, for the awesome Logan treats. He will have treats forever, thanks to you. <laughs> right there. Aww. Everyone gets a cookie. Here's a little chunk. It's Skittles. Okay. Here's a little chunkers. Here's your last one. You only get part of one. Okay. Here. You ready? Can I come see Kai anyway? Yay, <laughs> Logan. Yay. Oh, Skittles so cute. Yeah, it's a good boy. Yay, Logan! <laughs> and Skittles, Skittles and rabbits and Shep. weird bird things. <laughs> 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 Maybe one more. Okay. Logan cookie time. Awesome. See, I'm that way too. Maybe one more. So we're actually gonna we're actually gonna talk about Lego today, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> yeah, I wanted to um, there was something I wanted to talk about because we um, the subject of a couple of our um, of our chats has been about the insane amount of giant sets that Lego has been putting out lately and how it's been really impossible Ooh. to keep up. And I actually thought we were we were like at a stopping point. I was like, okay, Christmas is on its way. That we're gonna, you know, we're probably um, done with the really giant sets. Well, no. And if you were watching on Friday or if you were in any kind of Lego world over, since Friday, you'll know that... Um, They've announced the Colosseum, which is now the largest Lego set at something like 9,036 pieces or something yeah. crazy. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah. So I'm going to real quick, here we go. There is a picture. Uh, this is from Brothers Brick, but this is one of the pictures. Now, this is, from what I understand, it's about 10 and a half inches high, uh, 20 inches <laughs> wide, and 23 inches deep. Well, you so, can see you can see a micro scale car in the foreground that's a one by two plate, so it's pretty big. Oh that's yes, huge. and by the way, the car, Roller I'm ninety five percent positive, is the car that the, the um sorry, what's the yellow Italian car that they just released the model not too Fiat? long ago? The Fiat. The what? The Fiat. The Fiat. I think that's supposed to be the Fiat. Um, cause it's yellow or at least one of the cars is yellow that makes sense. and I yeah. think it's supposed to be the Fiat and because in the, uh, in the Fiat set, there's actually like a picture of it driving by the Coliseum. So oh, I right, would not, right. I would not be at all surprised if that was like an in, you know, like an in joke or, you know, it, an, an Easter egg. That's with probably all, an Easter egg. You're probably right. Yeah. yeah. With all the, uh, yeah. with the designers. By the way, I think they're a roller skate with a tile placed on top. Oh, is I it? Think that's so how it's they, smaller. I think that's, yeah. I think that's how they did I the car. And it's was... brilliant. Yep. It's really nice. Oh, well, I thought that was awfully tiny to be a one by two plate, <laughs> but it's still a pretty big model. Um, oh, it's gigantic. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. So like Boone was putting that thing together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he did a whole rebuild of it, which is awesome. Um, and he, which means he must have had the parts list quite a bit ahead of time, ahead of the announcement. Um, so I, I'm just curious what, how y'all feel about this, because my personal opinion is I think it's a cool model, and certainly they've done really, really, and it's certainly accurate, way accurate, um, and I appreciate that about it. And they've certainly done like the Taj Mahal and these other sort of like larger sets of um, uh, of things. But I just, I don't know, like the Taj Mahal has all those great, like, um, you know, like the, the, sh the different shapes and all of that kind of stuff. And I, this just seems like a lot of tan. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Say, so, a lot of white, are, so. are we are we going to talk about just this Uber set in particular, or all Uber sets in general? Because well, we'll talk, I, this we'll one talk, is a bit different than most to me. Yeah, we'll talk about some. I mean, we'll talk about other sets, but specifically right now, I want to talk yep. about this okay. one. So, so what do you, what are your thoughts, Moto? What do you think? I, I think it would be great if you want to recreate Tatooine. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> like I mean, but there's not a lot of brick in it, and the brick that you get is a massive qu quantity. Um, I don't like architecture, so it's not for me. I mean, it's I think it's targeted toward people who really love that architecture line, and really want to see something just epic in the you know in the in the ultimate scale. For me, I can't imagine doing something like X two twenty times. 
to, to get that fully realized yeah. model together. That would be that'd be a rough go of it. I, I've been to the Colosseum in Rome uh, on my on my. Um, me too. Yeah, me too. You know, yeah, uh, uh, and it is. It's it's it is perfectly that. But man, that is a whopping lot of tan. Oh. Well, well Moto, I think I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Well, I think right you hit an idea that I have about it right on the head when you said it's the ultimate architecture. Mm -hmm. I think they have this thing where like you can buy a Millennium Falcon or you can buy a UCS. It's the UCS for architecture. Yeah, exactly. it really is. So yeah. they've identified the the architecture audience and said, "Here's your ultimate." Yeah, I mean, there, there's been a t so I've been on a few I watch a lot of YouTube live streams, don't judge me, but there's been a lot of discussion about the release of this set, of course, and, and it really is the hot topic to speak to. Um, there's so many different directions to go, but ultimately, yeah, I think I think if you're into architecture, this is, this is going to be your set. If you're not, then it's probably a hard pass, you know? Um, it's got a hell of, heck of a lot of uh, part count. But right. it's just a lot of the same part, and then the building itself is going to be extremely repetitive. I think. Yeah, yeah. I think technically from gorgeous. An from an architecture standpoint, because I am a big fan of architecture and the Lego architecture sets, and and uh, you know, and same thing. Like I've I've been there. I've been to the Roman Colosseum, um, and it's it's very impressive and everything. I don't think that that would be the thing I would pick to to make a UCS architecture set uh, out of. I would have it picked the Parthenon myself. Well, but and that's... it's also, it's interesting too that like the, you know, we're calling, well, I guess we're just calling them UC, UCS sets are now infamous for their like all one color models. Yeah. <laughs> like the Star Wars Seriously. ones are all gray. This one is all tan. Um, and I guess, you know, that's, and I do, I think that there will be, there's definitely an audience for this, but I just wonder at that price point, um, and with that many, like that many pieces and the size of it, how popular this is going to be. It just seems yeah. an odd choice. All I'll right. Say. So not, not to, not to beat the whole ideas Coraline thing into the ground, but again, that's still a pretty fresh wound for me. Mm -hmm. So when I see stuff like this, and especially since the, the, they made that announcement in what October or whatever, all these big sets have been coming out and that's always the kind of the question to me is like it's like really they picked that because that's that's what it feels like to me obviously they they this was already in production before mm -hmm. they made that announcement but it's just one of, it's like i'm trying to figure out the logic to it and and that's exactly how i felt about it i'm looking at this thing that's like so massive and so expensive and to me somewhat underwhelming and i'm like so but they thought this was going to be a hot seller somehow so i'll say well, it, get it. <laughs> it is it is a it's an existing landmark that's really iconic like if so i go to the seven wonders of the world but no if you want repetitive try to do the try to do the you know the the egyptian pyramids at giza that would be right insane yeah um yeah. but on the other hand i try to think of you know something that's truly understood around the world and i you know, for this, the, 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 you know, the technical solution for the, for making it round and, and all that, that goes into it. It's kind of well, like I, this. Yeah. This is probably where it landed. And there's a lot of stuff you have to think about, but I mean, it's, I think what makes it such know. a weird subject for me is that the, the nature of any Lego build, even, even the way that they did this, it still feels very clean and polished because of the medium that you're building with, right? Like you're building with yeah. these like shiny brand new, you know, Mm -hmm. angular like uh lego bricks and they're trying to recreate something that's essentially a ruin of some sort you know oh, yeah it's, it's trashed if you've been there yeah, it doesn't yeah. Really, yeah. that's the part that doesn't come across for me in the model that that is part like a huge part of of what the coliseum is you know mm -hmm. so it's again to me just kind of an odd choice to put that much that many resources into and to make that big of a, a bet on how well it's going to sell at that price point. It just seems, it just seems odd to me. I think. But I, I think it's a very. I mean, it has a. It's definitely got a, a limited audience, um, yeah. both for price, for subject, and all that. But it is. It, it very much is like the UCS 
products. It also reminds me a lot of the Manchester United Stadium, right? I was going to yeah. mention very that. Very limited one. audience. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You well, know, except yeah. that, you know, football is the most popular sport in the world, and that's yeah. the number one club. So that's where they well, went, yeah, right? Yeah, but, you know. I feel I, like maybe our I, perspective. It's, it's, I hear you. very similar. I feel like maybe our perspective sitting yeah. here in the U.S. is a little different, yeah. right? Like, yeah, of course. Yeah. Soccer, football is not, you know, quite as popular here. And maybe antiquities aren't quite as popular in the U.S. as they are in Europe. Oh, I don't know. I was listening. I was listening to London Bridge Bricks, and that's all mostly European folks. And there was the same criticism coming oh, really? through from yeah from Europe. Well, I think you know? repetition goes a lot further in architecture than a lot of other things. Yeah, I don't. Right? I actually if don't you... mind the repetition. Yeah. The repetition is what it is. There is a lot of repetition in patterning in architecture, mm -hmm. and yeah. I don't mind that. Although I've only ever built like I have a Taj Mahal. I've never been compelled to actually build it. It was that was definitely. <laughs> collector's item and I even thought about it I was like well should I trade in my Taj Mahal and get the Coliseum instead because at least I've been to the Coliseum but yeah I've just been I haven't really heard any reviews or anybody talking about it but that's just kind of my own thought as I look at it and I'm like it doesn't it doesn't take me there it's not something that's remnant it, it doesn't it just doesn't have that vibe of like the one that I saw in person really like it's a cool shape and there's some really interesting details but it's just too much and yeah back yeah to like there's a and there's a releases as they've had it's just especially now like now that we've had so we've been, maybe if i hadn't bought any other sets in a year i'd be more compelled to buy it but it's like man that's an easy one to eliminate because it's just too much i think there is a small there is a small consideration about the history of, a, of of this structure as well I mean, essentially, it's a gigantic murder dome, yeah, right? Totally. Yeah, totally. So, right? so what, are you, what are you celebrating? Are you yeah. celebrating all the people that basically were dying for at the entertainment no, of the obvious, Romans? It's obviously focused on the architecture, but yeah. Well, it is, but it is yeah. a murder dome yeah. when you get down yeah. to it. Yeah. True. It does, have, it does have some dark history to it. Whereas, you know, you, Richard, you mentioned the Parthenon. I mean, that would celebrate... Uh, something more elevated and i think you'd get a lot more interesting parts out of the statues and all the other stuff if they really yeah. tried to bring it back mm. to life so i think it would fit in the architecture line better too because of sure the well, yeah agreed yeah this well, is a weird one for me all, all around i don't know no well, i so um so, so peter hornberger says um and i, I this is interesting <clears throat> are sets like this things that typically show up as builds at conventions and this series might be a bridge to connect the set builder to the mock convention builds. It's an interesting concept. Microscale? I usually see big fig scale cities. Like people really love modulars and that's why yeah, I see Yeah, I was gonna lot. say like if I've seen most of the architecture type stuff that I've seen, like the stuff that Rocco builds and all that is is like micro build. And it's and it's actually more impressive to me than something hmm. like this because what you can build and with like a small footprint and still like for it to still be kind of identifiable. I think is would have been the way to go. Like I don't really get why they would need to blow this up so much. Like I well, just can't well, I think head. okay. So I think I mean from what I I've think seen, in general we're there, hearing it's kind of a it's kind of a miss, right? But then a, on the other hand, you have like a UCS Ghostbuster car that nobody can, everybody's freaking out about. So the Ecto one one, yeah, everybody's so flying, one everybody, that thing's flying off the shelves. Right. So really this is what. Either, so. don't but see, this is what I was. Ta this is what I mean is that they have. They have, um, I don't know. Um, first of all, the attention to detail is astonishing. Like they did, like yeah. when they were designing this, they went. I mean, it is highly, highly detailed. Yep. Um, and I it think that. Um, oh, so Brickman Mosaic. Sorry. By the way, hi. Says I watched the designer video earlier, and he said that he used his creativity to build this amazing set. Yeah, I mean, I, there's no denying it's a great model. When, here, here's the thing. If you want the Lego Masters equivalent, everything is perfect except for the story. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's that. Oh, there well. you go. Yeah. No, really I mean, topic. but it's the not... story could be rough. And But what I've heard, but what I've heard <laughs> from people overwhelmingly is that it's a, while it's a really beautiful model and well-constructed and well-designed, and it absolutely is 100%, there's no denying it, um, it is, um, couldn't they have accomplished the same thing on a smaller <laughs> scale at a smaller price point? Yep. They could yeah. have. Yeah. So that's really... We know they could because we've seen architecture. Yeah. Right. So that's yeah. that's mostly what I've uh, what I what I say. And I and I want to say like I know we're kind of dogging on it here, but 
I gotta say that like I still do feel that it is a beautiful model and well done. Like there's there is not you know not an argument there. I just it seems ill timed. Yeah. Um, given Indeed. the rest of of everything, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, to yeah. what Brickman Mosaics Art said. Um, as a designer, as a lighting designer, I think even if someone gave me a Broadway musical to light, I mean, other than the fact that I'm not quite qualified for that, but if someone gave me a big project to light, I would be into it as a designer and I would do it and I would give it my all. Even yeah. if at the end people said, well, you know, you're not going to be able to fill the theater. But what a great, you know, from, for, from a designer standpoint, I'm sure oh. they gave it their all. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't more than give it their all. I mean, it is, there's no model. denying. It's a, it's a beautiful oh. design. And I wish I had millions of bucks. Oh, where something so, so, hey, can you all hang one second? Can you yeah. all hear them? Because now to us, their audio just sounds like yeah. um, computer oh, no. scribble. Just curious. Testing, I testing. hear if all of you guys great. Hear them or not? Um, Can we execute for, Project for Delta? It sounds terrible. Is there any way we can? It's so on there and again. The normal ones. I'll have to change settings it's, it's for everything. It's good to everyone in the chat. So. Okay. Um, we are gonna we're gonna take a, a quick pause here um, and try and fix our audio from our end. So why don't y'all, uh, the three of you, can continue talking while we figure this out. Hopefully. Okay, so we need to execute Plan Delta at some point when they're back. <laughs> so what's the key? What's the keyword where we all just get up and hide? Uh, can I plug it in or no? I don't know. What's the keyword? I don't know. Um, Clicky. Can, can everybody else still hear us? Can they? Can they plot Oh yeah, they, yeah. they can probably right. hear us. Okay. They should come up with the code word. Right, hide. So, yeah, so give us a code word. Too obvious. Oh, word is hide. Sure sausage. Many fig Nick says sausage. There sausage you works. Go. <laughs> sausage is. Always. So we're oh they got their they got their earbuds coming in get ready okay <laughs> and bring back bring back clickies yeah right yeah yep yep I'm gonna get preps I've got a clutch of clickies over here Oh man, oh, no, I need a, I need something to attach them blind, to. Though. I have so many I can't hold them all. Wireless is fine. I can hear them still. Wireless is fine for now. It's fine. Wait, what are we doing? Oh, Richard's getting it back. Yep. Hi, everyone. Uh oh. Hi. Click hey. and scream real loud. What? Oh, I see. I'm just reading Remy Baker's comment. Are you all right? <clears throat> can everyone here still? Yeah, we <laughs> can hear you. I think I'm Are gonna go. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna go refill my coffee and just have a breather in the kitchen, and I'll be right back. Everyone. Yeah, yeah. go for it. A lot of a lot of technical. Yeah, it's been a, it's today. been an up and down sort of uh, <laughs> roller coaster of a day, hasn't it? Yep. Yes, yeah. Alexander twenty three. Clutch is the plural of clickies. A clutch. A clutch. A clutch of clickies. Of clickies. <laughs> I thought that I thought that would be a good term. I don't know if it's the official term, but I think it, it seems be. right. It seems right. You know, parallel evolution, I saw, gosh darn it, I can't remember who it was, but someone's son online, someone designed a new um, Clicky character, knowing nothing about Clicky, but it was like it had the eyes, it had mm -hmm. a, uh, the one oh, ring really? for the nose, and, and horns on the sides. <clears throat> yeah, I was told by a more experienced AFOL that, yeah, this has been around for a while, it comes and goes in cycles. But, so it seems inevitable that people are going to stick eyeballs on a brick separator. Doesn't it, don't you think, if there's if It's there's inevitable. Two, well, it looks sort of like a face anyway. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we came up with it first. <laughs> you came, you came up with the, with the name and yeah. the, and the culture and the we, cult behind it, yes. We built the cult. We gave it a story. It is. Well, Crystal Star is calling it. She's like, I need my clicky. Oh, <laughs> oh right on. Oh, I miss Crystal. Yeah, yeah. Gotta reach out to her. She's doing so, okay. She's doing okay on Twitch. Oh, okay. good, good. I see cool <clears throat> pictures of her. Welcome <laughs> back. Hi. What is that? Whoa, what is that, like Moto? Oh, I. Um, so, are you guys familiar? We talked about no November, right? With two V's. Did no, we? no, I know what Movember is. Oh, I've been on so many. Okay, so. Uh, November with two V's is a classic space um, 
thing for anybody who builds spaceships. This has been around for a while. There was a, uh, I forget his name, but he was an AFOL. He loved Vic Viper. And in the month of November, you're supposed to build a tribute to a Vic Viper spaceship, which means that mm. it has gigantic protrusions off the front. It's got a single cockpit, a single engine, a large single tail, and then Delta wings. Um, but I've been trying, I'm late because I started two weeks late, but I've been working on <laughs> building the wing part of it. Whoa. So That's crazy. Yeah, I, I've, uh, now, on one of Boone's things, keeping him company, I found a way to weld uh, two uh, of these tail fins from the large airplane wow. sets. Nice. And then wow. the other, yeah, the other problem to solve is how do you, they only have two studs to work with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how do you get that into a body without the whole weight of it causing mm -hmm. it to fall off? That's so tough. So if, I, so if I take that off, it really is holding on by four studs to the, to the mm -hmm. what will be the spaceship body. But yeah, I've got these wings. That's what I was kind of staring down at while we were talking. And then I've got the uh, engine and I've got the front of the Vic. Oh, um, Holly, I wanted to show you the front of the Vic Viper. Hold on. Okay. Hey, while you find that, Moto, um, yep. do you, using your crystal ball, do you imagine solving that sideways attachment with Technic? No, I solved it. I, oh, I did a, uh, I'm going to have to cut a video for it. It's kind yeah. of a, it's a really cool um, mystical treatment to get that to work. Oh, I, oh, I spy, I spy uh, Belleville doors. Yeah, look at that. Yes. That's cool. That's Whoa. fantastic. Whoa, that Thank is you, so you, cool. buddy. <laughs> so yeah, wow. I bought, uh, when I ordered something from Europe uh, for the, the set I'm going to send you, Richard and Flynn, Ooh. they happen to have a ton of these Belleville doors. So I did it as a writer. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not. I'm so glad I did. I'm not ashamed because so those are good. awesome. No, it's awesome. Are they in clips? They, they have are two studs on them. Yeah, they have two studs on them. So I did. I did do a clip technique, but it's it's um, normally if someone was going to do a hinge, it would have been a, a two stud wide solution, and I got it down to one. Nice. Mm, very so cool. I'll have to I'll have to share the Crazy. the magic that went into that as well. You will. That's so that lovely. Very cool. Awesome, Mono. Yeah, Thank no you. problem. Has Blair seen that yet? Blair He's is seeing it in right now. Time. Yeah, <laughs> cool. he he can if you let him in, or he yeah, probably well, will dial well, in makes, at some point. He makes such fanciful spaceships. It yeah. made me think of him some too. Yeah, both of you. So, um, oh, there was something. Oh, so speaking of like the internet things of challenges and stuff. Um, not only is it this, and so, but also, Modu, isn't there a ship timber as well, which is like a whole nother thing, right? Like that's a whole yeah, nother we talked about what, yeah. So we talked about what ship means, right? Significantly huge investment in parts. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, September is dedicated if you're a spaceship builder to building a ship within the month. Or you are promoting the relationship between two fictional characters in your fandom of choice. We, we discussed that as well. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, so, but. Uh, right now, there is um, there is also the uh, build to give uh, mm -hmm. challenge. I don't know if it's so much of a challenge, <clears throat> but the build to give uh, that Lego is running, and that is that you make um, a holiday ornament, you post oh, cool. it online with the hashtag build to give, and then what happens with those? Um, that doesn't each time the hashtag goes out, there is either money or sets put towards getting. Uh, people who can't afford Lego, Lego. Yep. It's uh, a set. Kids specifically. They give, they give a set. set to a child in need, yep. There you oh, go. That's awesome. So, really really, awesome. let's look at yours and then we'll look at Holly's. Holly's um, awesome, too. <laughs> it's Ooh, very nice. I thought. Yeah, it's this is a door hanger. Snowflake. Yeah, it, it, this is a door hanger, so I have to do a new photo. Yes. Originally, it was a little different, but I, my mind was itching to fix it, so I fixed it. Well, wow, all those pretty. giant windmills we see in windmill farms should have mm. blades like that. Well, you know what it's making me think? It's making <laughs> me think that when we come back from our little vacation, we should do a build to give challenge. Yes. On yeah. the show. Yes. And everybody builds something for the build to give. Um, I think that would be a really, I think that would be a really awesome thing for the community to do. Yep. Yeah, Holly's is incredible. It's the one I've seen. Yeah. A lot smaller. <laughs> Well, yeah, you know me. It's always I get I get away from myself. You know that would actually that would be a really cool tree topper too. 
If you oh, yeah, it. totally. Gotcha. Yeah, right. my ceilings aren't tall enough for that. <laughs> well, because I've, I've been, me been meaning to build a Lego tree topper for our Lego tree, the one that we put all our, like, keychains and Lego ornaments and stuff on, so... Um, and, and be aware, too, that this is not this is not just Christmas-oriented, everybody who's in the audience. Mm -hmm. Like, this is just, like, holiday It's general, ornament. Holiday. Yeah, ornament. Yeah, yeah, ornament. You an ornament. Yeah. yeah you could do Star ornament. Wars. They've got Star Wars ornaments. You could do yep. whatever you want. Exactly. Um, clicky so, ornaments. Yeah, clicky ornaments. There you go. There All you right, go. Sh that show us. Uh, uh, go ahead and show us, uh, Holly. Okay. Um, so I built this one for specifically for my son, who loves gnomes. You guys might have seen me post it on Instagram or something if you're following. But um, That's really mm -hmm. cute. Yeah. So That's I actually so did a couple of different versions. I built one and decided it was not good enough and then completely took only, it apart and did another only the best. Well, only the best. It's great. And of course, it's very. it's got a Santa vibe. As it well. does have a Santa vibe. I know. <laughs> I, I realize like gnomes, you think of kind of more of like a summer thing because they're like in the garden or whatever. And then around Christmas time, it's like, like if I built this in the summer, it would have looked like a gnome, but now it looks like Santa. <laughs> I know you said those cloud parts. Yeah, it's just she used all the cloud parts to a perfect effect. Those yeah, are the, the, the cloud part. I'll show you the back of it because this is kind of how what's holding it all together. Um, NPU. And, yeah, and, it, and these are these were so the part that I started with was this piece, which was like a, actually a heart. It's just an upside down. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, and so man. He's building everything at a 45 degree angle off of that, which is That's why his so nose brilliant. works so well. Nice. Like, yeah, just... I noticed when you, can you, will you turn it around again? Yeah. You have that quarter round. Go. Look at those mm -hmm. cool angles. Really, okay. really yep. cool. Yeah, and I gotta say, together, but the tricky part really is the is the clouds because these clouds have like a weird, you sort of see yeah. the back of them where oh, you're sort yeah. of limited to where they'll connect, and then this radius here isn't is kind of odd. Like you can you have to juxtaposition it in such a way between the studs that you're limited in the angles that you can place it. So yeah, trying to like totally fill all this out was actually yeah. really hard. <laughs> what I like is you can so change the expression just by moving, you know, by changing the angle of the eyebrows. Oh yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Get grumpy yeah. or happy well, or surprised. Yeah. yeah. I was say too, like, if yeah. I may make one suggestion um, in that, like, and, and this is just from like a visual design sense. If you really mm -hmm. wanted to sell it more as a gnome than Santa, if his hat was perfectly pointed straight up, it yeah. would it would sell the gnome thing a little bit yeah. more than the not with those particular parts maybe right but... I'd have to come up with I yeah I started to do that like I put I tried putting like two of these you know behind oh, yeah. I basically need a whole different I and I may do it I may do another one because like I said he's obsessed my son is obsessed with gnomes so mm -hmm. I could build like five different gnomes and he just it's like my kid with cats right it's, it's that thing that's yeah. yeah it's insane so um and i made i may do that it's just the fact that i saw this piece and was like oh that's a cute little like it's it just great. like a gnome hat to me but then of course the scale of it once i got all had to use all these cloud pieces the scale wasn't right yeah so this was my little hack was just adding this piece on um but i may do a different one with completely different like more narrow like wedge pieces yeah like a little triangle hat well. can no. i make a, a design <clears throat> comment about it yeah, I think in a lot of the best design, and I see this in architecture a lot, but I see it with this piece, Holly, that that symmetry and repetition go a long way. You can do so much with symmetry and repetition, but what makes like that the Colosseum? Piece, I think what makes that piece so much more interesting is the fact that the top of the hat is off to the side, which gives yeah. it just that little bit of offness that yep. makes it all very interesting and not a static yeah. mirrored piece. Yeah, now, I, w I was in no way um, uh, critiquing. I was no, just no, saying no, no. that, like, that... Um, no, it's obvious. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's, it's that... funny. Sometimes there's just, like, that one little thing that will yeah. change it from one thing to another, and how funny, right? Like, just No, like you're a... totally right. And the, and I did think about that, but because I did think about just completely scrapping that piece and just doing the tall pointed hat, but then I was kind of happy with it looking like Santa, no, actually. No, it looks great. Like, and it's great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is that a is that a belt worthy worthy of sausage lug? Uh, no, because there's no there's sausage. No, in there's it. no hot dogs in it. <laughs> next, next ornament, Holly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we just disappeared. Sausage yeah. lug, Holly. I see paint pusher in the background. Hi, hey, Robert. Are you there. <laughs> Holly totally lost it. <laughs> Hi. Um. 
It, well, yeah. So I think I think that's great. I think maybe after after Thanksgiving, it's a we fail, will... Moto. It didn't work. She um, missed the she missed the code word. Oh, I didn't see it. No, sorry. Oh, I was, I, I was spotlighted and I couldn't see the other screen. <laughs> That's so cool. That's hilarious. <laughs> it's like a they're almost like a um like a chorus line of of oh. uh, clickies there. A chorus line. Blair says there's a nomenclature joke in there somewhere. Oh, oh gosh, nice Blair, word why? too. Oh my goodness! Why? <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to name him no. Noam Chomsky. Now we were, um, we were. Oh yes, from that Noam video Chomsky. Game. Oh, oh, that's from a video sure. game. That's a joke from a video game. <laughs> Believe it or not, there's a there was a a video game called Left for Dead, which was actually an amazing multiplayer video game, and the only like multiplayer video game I ever liked. And Part of it was in a spooky carnival because, of course, it was. And there is a there was like a like a ball throwing prize booth that you could go into and pick up a special. And it was a zombie game, by the way. And you could pick up a special little gnome, and its name was Gnome Chomp Ski. Oh, yeah, it was mm. very it was wow. very silly. So very yeah, fun. out of left field. Yeah, there you go. Anyway. So, so now, Holly, if your son is ever, you know, um, you know, playing with all the all the garden gnomes, you could say he's hanging with his gnomies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm not sure yes. he would even get that reference. I don't know. What? Um, so why, so why am I hanging with my gnomies? Painful. <laughs> Oh yes. Um, so Alex twenty three is reminding me that was it was actually part of a quest. You had to go get Noam Chomsky and carry that through the entirety of the level to get like the special Noam Chomsky. Ridiculous. Anyway, <laughs> drive by shrooming. So I'm I'm a uh, wow. Uh, so um, I'm interested to know um, what uh, now before. Uh, uh, Moto, you were saying something we, before we started talking about the Colosseum. You asked uh -huh. if we were going to be talking about big sets in general or just the Colosseum. Because there's a it, lot. It made it seem like um, you had something else to say on the general subject of large sets. So I'm curious what that is. <laughs> Nothing much, just that there's more and they're always rolling out this year. I mean, more than ever. Yeah. Right? And, and it is that push into the adult area i expect that's why the black heart boxes and all that came out but it makes me wonder what next year's gonna look like because i feel like they've they've been pushing sets like i think i've even heard this from somebody i don't know if it's confirmed but the rumor was that they've taken a lot of sets that were slated for next year and have pushed them mm. forward you know because everybody's like home right now and they're trying to take advantage of people wanting more sets to build or something so mm, makes, if that's true, new. then what does next year look like? Is there only going to be like one new set every six months? So <laughs> Alex, or maybe they'll focus hmm. more on smaller sets, which would, maybe. you know. Alex because... 23 right. is asking, um, he said he heard rumors that they are, um, that originally they were going to be retiring the treehouse, but now they've, they're putting that off. Is that something that you've heard? I haven't heard anything about that. I don't normally I don't know if it's going to be retired, but I saw someone post an image where they contacted Lego customer service saying, is the treehouse going to be retired? And they came back and said, no, it's not. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, I, mean, I just... don't know. Again, I'm totally confused based on this last idea ideas round that they rejected so many. You know, it, the two things do not equate to me, that they would have a record number of idea submissions and only pick one but then also like have wave after wave of, after wave of these like huge releases it just doesn't it doesn't make a whole lot of sense so i do kind of wonder if um because again there's that delay of one to two years between every decision they make for a set is is that some kind of indication that they are going to be majorly slowing down production for next year is maybe that why they're not picking as many sets from ideas you know i don't know if there's money to be made they're there to make it. So, I mean, people are, for the most part, consuming these sets. I mean, if you look at the Ecto-1 that's been on fire, the Batwing, 
the I mean, I could just go down the list, right? Well, of what these, does it look like a year from sets. now? Like if, you know, given, you know, because right now I feel like there's this delay between um, like at least economically, like I don't think that we've seen the crash and burn from like how this is all going to play out economically yet. Like, again, yeah. there's a delay. Yeah, not yet. Mm -hmm. Are they anticipating that people aren't going to have the same resources next year as they have this year or? I just kind of want, these are the things I think about. It's like, do they? I, well, do yes, so large, I can tell you our large corporation is planning and they do strategically think about the way the world economy is going to go when exactly. um, they, yeah, anyway, it affects me as an employee and it's something that gets done on large corporations and, right. and Lego is a large corporation, so. Yeah. So anyway, I'm just I'm just kind of looking at all the clues and kind of putting it all together. It's like, hmm, all of a sudden they're in this rush to push all these big sets out like now, like this year. And it seems like I've seen at least a little bit of reluctance for putting out a ton of sets next year just by way of like their ideas decision. So it does, it, it's stuff that for me is like starting to kind of add up to like, mm. hmm, maybe next year looks a lot different than this year. Well, and there's also the, you know, the, the re-release of the two ideas sets, you know, so maybe they're thinking of that as the a possibility ideas, yeah and the two idea sets that are kind of like their best sellers right so right maybe yeah they thought it was a safer choice to just re-release those and bank on that than than make any big risks and new ideas yep so i that. heard hard um, to know yeah uh wait a minute I, I, da, 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 da. there's so many rumors it's just you know yeah no we don't like i know we talk about we don't we don't um discuss rumors but that is that's restricted to talking about rumors of things that haven't come out yet yeah and as far as like extrapolating on yeah. what d marketing decisions they make like that's just we're just talking here just i have no clue yeah. i have no clue what the you know the greatest toy maker the largest toy maker in the world is it still the largest toy maker in the world yeah probably yeah um, well i'm just gonna do i'm very i'm i'm just curious um it does seem like it just does seem like a lot of really large, expensive sets coming out all at all at once. Like yeah. just, and it seems like once they made the decision to start marketing things towards adults, it's like all of a sudden it was all these super high price sets that came out like right at the same time. And I'm curious what effect that's going to have. Like, um, has anybody mm -hmm. heard? Um, I mean, like of course we are supposed to be getting a um, or should be according to schedule getting a new modular in january we should mm -hmm. be i mean they they usually announce it about this time every year and mm -hmm. then it comes out in january usually right yes and then the, there you go there's another expensive yeah. set although generally they in the range of expensive sets it's in the uh, lower no. end <laughs> unless no, they decide that, to do something crazy flynn, flynn you crack their strategy they sell a, they they offer a bunch of 500 dollars sets so the modulars right. look cheap by that's comparison. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, that's only 150, 200. You know, that's oh, not that bad. That's exactly right. That's not a Coliseum. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I felt that way about the Batwing when the Batwing came out. I was like, oh, finally, an affordable one. Well, I, mean, I remember when, when we first started in the hobby, and we're just talking like five years ago here, um, that to me, like the most expensive sets on the shelves were the modulars. Yeah. Well, we got that pirate yeah. ship as a, as a gift, right? Yeah. And, and it was huge, it impossibly was huge. We couldn't believe how big that set it was. It seemed at the at time. Yeah. time. Um, yeah, unless you're, unless you're the technic. I mean, the technic high time, end is pretty high. I mean, I'm sure, and again, we are not like, you know, big Star Wars people, but I'm sure there, were prob there was probably a very expensive one on the shelf, you know, at the store, a Star Wars set, whatever. But as far as, like, it seems like Falcon. the modulars at that time were kind of like the top tier of large Lego sets, with the exception of, like, the UCS stuff. And now, it's like that bar has been raised, and now we're talking, like, three and four hundred dollar, and five and six hundred dollar sets are now becoming, like, the top, the top one. And they're releasing a ton of them, not just like, oh, yeah. there's that one really expensive set that you could get. No, now there's like seven really expensive sets that you could well, get. I mean, yeah, like just yeah. out and right now, what are we talking? We've got the Coliseum. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got Diagon Alley. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got what are some other what are some other really big ones that just came Hogwarts out? Hogwarts Castle. Hogwarts Castle. Well, Hogwarts Castle's mm -hmm. been around a while, but uh, the piano. Yeah. 
piano. Yeah, just touch the sample. Um, I'm like looking around my room. Um, no, I, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I will say this. In a so, haunted house. Haunted house, yeah. So, so keep in mind that with, with, it, it makes sense to me simply because uh, yeah. Lego is pushing itself into the luxury brand goods market with these super high end sets. So yes. what I've seen a lot of on the day on day, on day shows, you know, where, where they bring in the famous actors and actresses, they're getting into Lego and they're getting, you know, they're 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 giving yeah. it this of uh, like this higher end brand appeal and the boxes mm. reflect that so that it's not going to be a high volume game, but it is going to be this, this area where, you, you know, if you have that massive disposable income, they're, they're really gearing themselves toward that market, especially when I started to mm. see things like the art sets, which are basically gigantic, epic, you know, mosaics for yeah. most of us. We're like, I got all these dots. I could do that myself, but for, you know, someone coming in, who's got that income and, and, and can see Lego's artwork or can put the Coliseum together or, you know, has that one set piece um, that are coming into this, you know, you know, kind of, you know, oh, I'm an adult and I love Lego and, and I'm just gonna, you know, yeah, I want that, I want that big epic show piece that when, you know, when the time comes, I can have it on the background of my Zoom call or whatever. Those art, that, I'm glad you brought up those art mosaic sets too, because that's another one that was oh, like yes. there you go. A, weird, a weird one that was like, especially if you wanted the Beatles or something, like who's going to want just one Beatle? Yeah. Ding <laughs> <laughs> you know, dong. Like, Blair. Yay, Blair. Blair's like, here. $400, $400 for a bunch of dots, really? <laughs> sure. I, I mean, I wish I could. Yeah. It's not that I'm knocking it. It's a great idea. It's a great concept. I wish I could have them, but I'm like, yeah, once I add all that up, I'm like, that's just, is that really where I'm going to spend my money? I'm not so sure. But, no, if, I mean, but if that's there, all you're there, into. You I'm know, just saying you're... this year there is a cultural shift that I see, and it yeah. does have to do with, um, you know, some Hollywood stars getting into the craft. It has to yes. do with moving up market, and it does have to do, you're right, with advancing all of these, um, you know, maybe they are pushing stuff ahead, but, but if they are, they're finding a market for it. And, you know, like any good, company if if you're successful at something you're not probably not going to stop right. <laughs> it almost seems like to they're me. obviously trying to tap into a lot of untapped markets and that was yeah. kind of the pitch i was trying to use for Coraline. is like there's this huge like a fan community or stop motion fan community out there that would really be into lego and we you know that was kind of the hook um although i feel like maybe they justified thinking like well you know like fans are probably already into lego like we need to get people into lego that aren't that wouldn't even consider it you know like mm. beatles fans or football fans or you know something like that that is like maybe that's where they're putting all that attention on is like okay how do we get these people that don't even think about lego into the hobby that's kind of like the Manchester united set i mean that's a pretty obscure yeah we brought that one up too market. yeah exactly well, it makes or me think or you know, it doesn't hurt that they constantly launch this you know TV show that's about you know something that we like. Yeah. You know, to pull the average viewer in as well. You know, that has an effect as well. So yeah. yeah. They're all, and, and even and even the Adidas things and the Levi's things, like you can tell that they're really pulling like yeah. to try and get attention to people who who normally wouldn't be paying attention. That's what I gather. Well, it it makes me think that maybe they're not expecting someone who would have bought a Friends or Elves set to buy. No, it's a totally Coliseum. different market. It's exactly. a brand new even... market rather than just expecting everyone who's already a fan to exactly. keep Exactly. That's exactly diet. right. That Roman Coliseum is appealing to people who are otherwise not into Lego. I think that's the point. Yeah. Well, and I think that's I, I also think that that's the direction that they've been that that they seem to be shifting with Lego ideas, right? Like we talked about that sort of like object that you can put on your shelf yep that somebody would walk wouldn't wa okay th I, know this is sound, I know this is gonna sound really weird i know this is gonna sound really weird but it's like giving people a pass to have lego on their shelves yeah. without somebody going oh you're into lego okay it's a toy. so like if it's, you walked it's in it's a collectible exactly. exactly so now it's not a toy it's a collectible you can put the roman coliseum on your shelf and everybody will go ooh and ah oh my gosh that's lego and then you won't get made fun of on your <laughs> that's but that 
but that's like what I, it is. Oh my God, I can't believe that's Lego. That is yeah. where you take the brand right beyond. Yep. That that is the. That's what I'm saying. There's this psychological break you have to hit in order to achieve that cachet, you know, whatever it is, that that perspective, and that's that's the phrasing around Lego Masters. That's part of the marketing potential. There is I can't believe that's Lego, not Lego. That's these high end sets. I can't believe that's not Lego. You know, that's. And then you you know, and then you also have people saying, "Oh, it's just so fun to put together a Lego set. It's so soothing and relaxing in these troubled times. I can't believe, you know, mm -hmm. how fun this was." So, you can you know, there's definitely that that messaging and that psychological shift that I just see occurring. Now, there is a there is a, a another thing that I've seen happening, at least in my brief, you know, AFO on this, which is as we as Lego evolves, um, I'm starting to hear a lot of folks who have been doing this for decades that, you know, the newer sets just, they don't have that original, um, they don't have a lot of basic brick is what it comes down to. Mm. Uh, okay. Okay. So if you look at it from the construction side of, you remember when sets were, this was even a bit on community if you watched it, where Omar talks about how, do you remember when Lego was simple? You know, he's like, when I went in the joint, Lego was simple. When I came back, all of a sudden there was Star Wars and Harry Potter. And it was, you know, but he's kind of <laughs> right where, where it, it, you know, the techniques have evolved. But also, I think plates are pretty much the new brick where they're looking for more detail, more construction of methods. And, yeah, you're not seeing, apart from the classic and some of the city stuff, mm -hmm. you, yeah. you don't see a lot of basic brick that you get within your set that lets you easily construct, um you know, just being able to knock together something's very straightforward and, and have something representative very quickly. You have to gather a lot of techniques in order to get something kind of put together the same way that these sets have elevated up. And What's, we'll so on that, on that so note, I know it's a different topic, but it's, it is something I've been hearing mm -hmm. coming through in the last month or two of, you know, um, people have been around for a while. It's like, where did all the basic bricks go? Remember, you used to be able to just have something and make something cool. Yeah, well, I think it depends you know, on. I know what you're building too, depending on what type of thing that you're building. Sure. Like obviously buildings are gonna have a little more basic brick in them than something really organic. But I will say that I know I actually did notice when I was putting together the bat wing, how refreshing it was to have a lot of brick. There's a lot of brick in it and there's a lot of plates too, but I feel like there were more bricks per, per part count for that set than I've seen in a long time. So it's interesting that you mentioned that. Yeah. I noticed it because I bought a big lot when I first got started in EFOL. And now three years later, I bought another bulk lot. Each one of them was roughly 120, 150 pounds. So when I sorted out 150 pounds three years ago, that was, there was a lot of basic brick, okay? That was a major component of it. This time, yeah. the basic brick is getting dusted by all the plates that are in there. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll There's see. a real <laughs> shift to me. There's been a shift in the kind of the, you know, the, the spread, the spread of the components. I'm, I'm kind of glad to not have too much brick though, because it does take up more space. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, well, I have to say, yeah, I have to but... say I'm really torn because as I mean, I like that bookshop build was so engaging. Like mm -hmm. it was just such an engaging build for um, like for me as an adult builder who likes to, who likes to learn new tech techniques and build things. Um, and but at the at the same time, like I get it, like I get the need to want to have some slightly, you know, like less complicated things. Um, but I also I have to I have to hand it to them for uh, to Lego for really um I don't know expanding that range, right? Yeah, like I'm very they're... progressive. I don't mind the loss of basic bricks in order to get all the fancy stuff and the new techniques, but yep. you know. I'm fine with either way. I think you can do complicated things with, in fact, that's kind of the camp that we've been teaching that Flynn's helped out with and mm -hmm. stuff. These kids basically get a medium sized creative box. That's mostly <clears throat> plain brick and a few mm -hmm. kind of specialty pieces, I guess. And we're basically, you know, kind of showing these kids what you can do with these parts. There's like, here's these special parts and this is all the things they can do. And here's what you can do with all this basic brick. So, you know, the possibilities are still endless regardless of what? They are. They, they are. It's just to me when I look at all the Star Wars sets, I don't see a lot of brick. I see a metric ton of plates. Same with Avengers or Marvel or you know you could add the list of things like Ninjago. 
you have a brick in there every once in a while, but there's a lot of technics showing up, which isn't a bad thing. You know, well, me, I like I like the ability to mix a bunch of different things together, but you know. That's right. Just put three plates together and you got a brick. <laughs> pretty much. So, that's my that's my mindset. Yep. yep. Yeah. So Blair, I'm curious, as somebody who builds with a lot of very like highly non -brick. detailed pieces and non brick, <laughs> what's your what is your take on all of this? Uh I mean I would say that Yes, we're moving in this sort of specialized parts direction, as some people like to call it, although I feel like we've actually gotten away from the specialized parts and are just more into detail pieces, which is great. Like yeah. the one by two slope with the wedge cut out, like how cool is that piece, you know? Mm -hmm. um, getting into the, the minutia of things that, you know, call me a blasphemer, but Mega Blocks was killing it at for years, one by one brackets and small yeah. slopes. And I mean, they were sucking everywhere else, brick quality and using specialized pieces to do an entire section of a build. But when it came to like those little detail parts, Lego seems to be finally catching up, um, which starts to, in my opinion, eliminate the need for where a lot of big brick filler was in models. Um, we now have so many things that you can put in instead of a big brick. You can put in an awesome snot brick. Boom. You no longer need a brick with a bracket on the front. Yeah, you're you you're articulating brick. where my mind was. I just I couldn't have the kind of argument, and it just sounded like I was a brick hater. But I, I think you've articulated where my mind was, is there's a lot more stuff you can swap in and out now. Yeah, I think it, it comes down to semantics, right? Because I feel like there's some parts that I that I consider like specialty pieces, and then there are some parts that I consider problem solvers. And then there are some parts that I consider more for like efficiency, you yeah, know? Yeah. So they all kind of have their merit, right? They all have well, their place and they all have their uses. And I feel like bricks, like plain bricks are kind of more of like that efficient piece where it's like, you know, you can fill in spaces and build things bigger, faster, you know, because they're bigger parts and just very simple shapes. Um, but, you know, something like this is like, you know, maybe what I call a problem solver with these like curved slopes or like, not even something I consider a specialty piece anymore, even though they're not a brick. They're just they're just nice finishing pieces, kind of like what Blair is saying. And then these clouds are more of like what I would consider like a specialty part that's going to have minimal usefulness. Well, yeah, you know, and, and keep in mind, it's got the usefulness. It just requires more foresight to like yeah. use it. Like when I use them in my my gingerbread house. And, and I would yeah, I want to say it's when not, we it's not as versatile as your generic like snot bricks and stuff yeah. is what yeah. I mean. So, That's what I mean by more specialty. So remember when Lego got in trouble with specialty pieces was in the nineties. They had these big yeah. one off molds that could not be used right. in a multitude of ways. So yes. those are know, the specialty parts that I think Blair was saying we're kind of getting actually getting away from that. That was that was the bad side of Lego and they almost went under because of it. Now yeah, right. now what we're seeing now to me is what Blair and you are articulating, which is they make a different piece, but it unlocks more potential each time you see another one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Problem solvers. Right. Yep. Like yeah, that yeah. new like that new piece that, that one is, you pointed out was um, unbelievable. Like that new piece that is not surprisingly in the um, the Coliseum and mm -hmm. also is a huge part of the um, Hogwarts castle. And that is the little tiny mini half arch. It's kind yep. of shaped like like that. It's got like a half of an yes. arch on each side with a with a uh, a center put stud on it. Mm -hmm. um, they use them for the the stained glass windows in um, in Hogwarts, and they also use them extensively for all those little arches. Yes, Holly, yeah. there. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, that's there's a one. corner piece too. Yep, and there's a corner one as well. Like those are that's an example oh. of a piece that by, has by been... the way, if anybody's listening, P A B wall, please. Yes, exactly. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hang on, let me put you let me spotlight you, Holly, because I want okay. everybody to see these pieces. Um, yeah, these are cool. These are like to me, these are pieces that were needed for a really long time. Right? Like if you want yeah. like there was no way that you could just have one stud in between your arches. It right. always had to be two. Yeah. And then they always. also, with the uh, Hogwarts it's catalog, they came out with these too, which is also oh, really those things are yeah. Those are, yeah, those are great. Yeah. But, you know, this also makes me think uh, a couple of things. One, that the relative pixel size of Lego models has gotten smaller. They're mm -hmm. sort of defaulting mm -hmm. yeah. to smaller detail. Mm -hmm. um, and two, because of that, um, while I used to do, or or ask Flynn to do, because spotlight. he's great about this. Um, you have to always click your gallery, yeah. There we go. Um, 
Well, we used to do more bricklink orders for tiny detail pieces. Now we have a ton of tiny detail pieces. Yep. And I might need to order 100 2 by 4 bricks, right. you know, because we just yep. don't have those hanging around. Yeah. yeah. And, and they do take up space. So it's kind of one of those things you don't really, unless you have a whole barn, you don't really want yeah, well, <laughs> to. Fair, fair enough. Oh, yeah. yep. well, I, I, deserve got that. Of, I got rid of a giant Lego I stack of that. basic bricks when I was running out of space and yeah, then regretted it space. immediately yeah. after, like the next time I came to a convention and needed to build something big. That's, well, yeah. I think of this, I think also a lot of this is dependent on what kind of builder you are. You guys don't fill your mattress totally. with a basic brick? That's how I sleep at night. <laughs> I really, I really do think it's important though to focus on what kind of builder people, builders people are. Yeah, that's because you have because you have builder, you have like old school style builders like Bill Volbrecht, who is yeah. a freaking genius. Like the the man is outrageously good at making. I mean, he designed multiple Legoland parks, makes right? Huge like, models. and yep. he makes huge models all using basic brick. Like, that's, he doesn't. That's a use... very good example of what I was trying to point out earlier. Is even if you have bricks, you can still do something amazingly complicated and and yeah. and. He cool. does beautiful sculptures, but then that's you exactly be larger. The, that's exactly the opposite of what the way I build. Yeah. So, like when I um, when I built my um Alice in Wonderland piece. The only building bricks I used in the entire thing, like actual two by four bricks, were in those green hedges that you ended up not even seeing in the image. Like they just kind mm -hmm. of no. like melted into the background and like people were standing in front of them. But I didn't use any basic brick in that at all. That was all detail pieces and plates. So and and I remember when we were first um, when we first got our first bulk buy, like um, just like Moto. There was um, more building bricks than other kinds of bricks. <laughs> it was a so, combination of mostly building bricks and then like five pounds of pins. Like little tiny, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, well, and studs, studs. But yeah. tires, that, tires are another thing you just wind up with a ton of. But oh yeah, it's... tires do take up a lot of space too. Oh. But I'm just saying, I found it very frustrating early on in, in our building that I couldn't build to the detail that I wanted to because we didn't have those bricks. And then all of a sudden, kind of like um, like Moto was saying, all of a sudden that balance like shifted and suddenly it was all detail pieces and very little building brick. So yeah, I get it. And I know a lot of people had trouble with the, um, with, uh, with Fab Max having basic color building bricks, right? <laughs> Because blue, mine. <laughs> blue, red, yellow, um, those are like the colors that everybody, or not, I won't say everybody, sorry, a lot of people consider like junk or filler colors because they are so basic. And that um, they, and so they were hard to come by. Like, oh, I and haven't. also they're, they're kind of, bricks are kind of expensive too. I don't, guys, I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but when you do need a big lot of plain brick, it, it, it adds up, especially, especially if you're getting yeah. it on, like Legos, uh, pick brick or something. Or, and you, and you have to pay yep. shipping on it and it's yeah. heavy. They're heavy. Yeah. yeah I feel like yeah. rather than paying oh. by the shape, we're paying by the ounce or pound for ABS. You are. Uh, one thing you, you mentioned color. So I did a YouTube video on the color breakout of, of, of when I sorted down mm -hmm. what you're right. What, what used to be amazing or what, what kind of blew my mind, although it's not surprising in retrospect is, you know, blue, yellow, and red used to be pretty popular colors when you would get a bulk lot. Well, they were all they um, had at a certain point. Yeah. <laughs> well, true. It, it, but I was amazed at how much tan. Tan was probably the third most popular color that I came across. And I think it, it has a lot to do with um, like Harry Potter or any of these, uh, yeah. any of the scenery. Mm -hmm. It has shifted from like the basic yellow and blue and red, remember, to fake out the scenery. But now that they have these natural colors, yeah. um, except for the greens, you know, which isn't still that there's not a lot of that. But how much uh, brown, reddish brown, how much tan. Yeah, and so much more dark orange, all, all those uh, dusty or darker colors, too, you see a lot more mm -hmm. now. Yeah, I would say that it doesn't seem, other than like one lot of bulk brick that I got at a like port leg meeting or something. I think we some they were given we had these like bags of just white two by four bricks. So I have a couple of cups worth of that. 
but then other than that like all my two by four color bricks are like you know, out of a hundred bricks, there's only a handful that are all the same color. Like it's really a variety mm -hmm. of color. Well, the good news is, like at Walmart, they were having a mega deal on those basic classic uh, boxes. Like some kind of love box. Like, even those, he bought, like, get he bought like fifty or something. It was insane. Yeah. And they bookended the market nicely. You know, mm -hmm. getting rid of first the gendered basic boxes was one of the best mm -hmm. things that Lego's done. Yes. No pink box, no blue box, just a yellow box with a rainbow. And yes. then giving different, now that we've, we've seen them give different types of that box too. There's like the mega pack. And then there are some mm -hmm. where they've gotten into more specialized boosters with right. eyeballs or something and, and stuff. Yeah. And that really, it balances it out because you can get really good deals on those. And you can buy your super fancy, you know, five to $800 adult set. And then yeah. somewhere and in between- like, yeah. 20% off on Amazon too. So yeah. stock up yeah. on those, y'all. And in the middle is Ninjago because it's everywhere and pervasive. <laughs> <laughs> and then it isn't. And it's a specialty part. And friends, and friends, yeah. For anyone who hasn't just completely exhausted their ability <laughs> to purchase Lego, isn't Black Friday month coming up? Isn't it like yeah. a Oh, yeah, it is. You bet it is. I don't know how much I'm going to have left. Double sure. points weekend next week. Double points weekend. Yeah, double purchase. points weekend. And two and... gifts with purchase. And a VIP weekend too coming up. Yeah, I that's think. next weekend. I'm tired of it's all, it's all, those wall hangers. It's a grand conjunction. Yeah, yeah. exactly. The double VIP, gifts with purchase, Black Friday. Yeah. Duh. It's kind of sad, right? Because I, yeah, there's definitely a, a shift because I feel like usually about this time every year I'm getting excited and like I've saved up and I'm ready to like, I'm finally ready to get those things that I've been wanting for a while. And now I'm like, you know, there's also been a sense of urgency every time these sets come out because everything's sold out so quickly, whether because they're underproducing or people are still like panic buying things or whatever it is. And so there's a lot of things I haven't, I haven't like saved up, you know, haven't been like waiting around too long if it's something I right. really want. So yeah. now I'm like, well, what's left that I have to have now that I can't really afford anything more. And, you know, I, I like I've already bought so many sets that it's not even like joyful anymore. You know? like... Well, I, I think that the time well, since March. There is, yeah, there is an expression. Is the juice worth the squeeze? <laughs> I mean, it always is, right? Like, ultimately. ultimately. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not going to fall for it. It's just, it's just not as like enjoyable now. Now it's like a. <laughs> when you get to that point where you feel like you're cornered into buying Lego. Yeah. It definitely, yeah, I mean, it, it alters the joyous feeling. It I wouldn't does. say it necessarily yeah. removes it entirely because getting new Lego is always awesome. But it's always fun. <laughs> yeah. And I've got such a backlog too. I haven't even been able to keep up with building this stuff. So I'm gonna feel like there's- You can drop something by if you want, you know? I don't yeah. want to keep it. I don't have space for it. I will give it back to you, but I'll build whatever you don't want to build. You know, I'm not going to give that away. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I had something close by. I wanted to talk on a specialty part real quick, too. Yeah, um, please. Um, my daughter and I were spotlight. building, we're working on, on the November build. Um, and uh, she picked up a piece that, unless you are, and I know some of the other ingenious builders out there have used them to great effect, but these little shooters from the Exoforce, uh, mm -hmm. a very odd piece. You can mm -hmm. put a bar through the middle, and if you're really clever, you start putting clips on the sides and stuff like that. And, you know, most people, though, they end up in the bottom of the bin, and they never get used. and they Or they get thrown away because then someone's like, oh, it's a half-melted Skittle or something. I don't know. But <laughs> my daughter grabbed these, and she put them in the bottom of a slope and was like, boom, it skates. Nice! And, oh, and she goes, a, where's my wow. Unikitty? I got to put it on <laughs> Oh. Like yeah. Okay, this so has half my brain at least. I, I had brilliant. a recent I had a recent experience. So how does it feel to get owned by a seven to nine year old? <laughs> oh, I can answer. <laughs> yeah, all the time. Absolutely. Proud. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm mostly. I'm mostly proud, and then I'm also very like I told you guys about that jealous that instant jealousy that I have to get rid of real quick. But it was like, yeah, it's awesome. You're a good, oh, yeah. good kid. I miss, yeah. I miss seeing all the kids in my classes come up with stuff like that, too, where they shove two things together. And I'm just like, I never would have thought of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's always that, too, right? It's always That's like just incredible. a few pieces. Like, I have stuff like that, too. Um, it's like the stuff my son builds. He'll come down here and, and start rummaging through parts. 
And with just a few pieces, you know, he starts to build things, you know, like this. That yep. are just nice. like really simple. Like he made a little like, you know, gumball machine kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and he does it like he'll just be, you know, behind me just kind of rummaging. And he's like, here, I built you something. <laughs> you so got to awesome. give that kid a video camera <laughs> and he can, out, he can out Tiago Tiago. Yeah, his little, uh, <laughs> his little like space space monsters and aliens and things that are just a, just a, in fact one of my favorites was a pac-man thing that he built that was just like I can't, i'm trying to remember what it was it was one of those little rod pieces where he that had the stud on the end and he put like the the cherry on one end and then he built this really simple little pac-man on the other end out of like two parts <laughs> and you knew exactly what it was i was like that's incredible like four parts and he <laughs> built a whole scene you Wait, did, you, did, did you have that experience with students when you had students did you have that same experience where they put something together and you're just like how in the heck did you come up with that oh often yeah okay. I, um absolutely that just the um there was always at least one in every class who would just come up with the most amazing stuff and it was always it was the stories that that mm -hmm. always um that always got me and um, and I know this is like a whole other, I know this is like a whole nother conversation and, and I don't want to get into some like crazy thing here, crazy conversation about this here, but I was always fascinated by the differences of approach, um, between my, um, my, my male presenting builders and my female presenting builders. Yeah. Um, and I know that there's like a lot of ink spilled and a lot of words talked about, but like as a teacher, as an educator, I watched it in real time yep. every single day. Yep. And it was amazing. The stuff that I noticed. So the, um, in general, unless if, and we're talking about like, and these were always kids that were around the same age. So I'm talking about a general, like these were, and, and if you're talking about from like eight eight to ten right mm -hmm. the boys would be happy to build with whatever color was there it would be this mishmash of whatever colors and the girls almost to a person would always build color coordinated things were one color um they had multiple colors that went together like it was just it was oh amazing and interesting to watch and i'm not saying this is everyone i'm just yeah. saying this is what i observed as a generality in an age group um in real time um mm -hmm. i also noticed that um like i would do uh we did a big project where we i would say okay everybody we're gonna everybody i want you to each build one small part of this castle wall and i want you to build this one castle tower and then we're gonna link all of them together and you can build whatever you want for the inside of the castle walls. Like everybody can do what they want. Again, in real time, I watched this happen. I mean, multiple, multiple classes. The boys would almost always cannons, <laughs> trebuchets, like mostly war, like battle type things. Um, and the girls would build the throne room and yeah. the king's bedroom and the queen's bedroom. And um, it was just it was it was just really, really interesting. And some of the funniest moments was asking the kids like what about their um, about their builds that they liked or like what they put into it. <laughs> and um, I just remember the um, that the 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 girls generally had more engaging character focused stories where the boys were kind of more like bigger picture, like these people are fighting these people. And then the, um, and then uh, with the girls would tell their stories. A lot of them were always like, well, this character is such and such, and she's doing this thing. And that's because this person was doing that. And it was sort of a lot more character focused. I mean, I'm sorry, I know that's getting away from our original subject, but it's just something that I noticed happen over and over and over again yeah. that was um, oh, particularly cool. fascinating to me as an educator. Oh, yeah, I, I'm I, sorry, I, Flynn, I've got about four minutes left. because we're I, know, okay, I, we I, all I actually have we're to go, too. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's pretty spot on. I mean, I have a boy and a girl, and I definitely, I mean, there's no denying 
the differences in how their brains work, which is really, I mean, it's interesting to watch them work together because that's where, you know, the stuff kind of starts to click. Like it's, there's a little bit of incompatibility in their personalities, unfortunately, but sometimes you kind of see where like the wild boy child would come up with these kind of like crazy chaotic ideas and she has a way of like helping him kind of harness that into like some direction you know yeah um like kind of just that that organized and chaos factor which is gee i wonder where they get all that from (laughs) (laughs) right right and you know and i'm not if only if only we could bring those together exactly which sometimes we do and it's glorious when they are able to work together but it is it is and and please be aware i'm not making any kind of blanket statement and saying that this is what every child is like like not at all i'm saying there is a generality though this is what i and i'm not and i'm trying not to generalize and i'm trying to put any like thing on one one person or another i'm just saying that as an educator i saw this happen it's for it's good years. that there's differences too. Like my daughter's like all of a sudden really, really into anime and she's been trying to like get me to watch it with her. Mm-hmm. And there's things that like you can tell, you can tell that it's uh and I've I've always been like in this very like boy centric world, right? Like I'm always surrounded by dudes all the time. And especially like with like when it comes to like story <laughs> writing and movie making and things like that, there's some things that really stand out to me as being like very male driven, you know? And I've been kind of like pointing out that stuff to her. Like she's trying to understand why I don't like one show and why I like another show better. And I'm like, and (laughs) one of the ways I kind of explained it to her, this one show that I wasn't crazy about, and I've only watched like not even a full season of it yet, but it's like, well, it's clearly written by all dudes. (laughs) And and that's kind of what I was explaining to her. I was like, there's no, there's no real character development. There's no real, there's already like a thousand plots going on in the second episode. You don't know who anybody is. You don't know what's going on. They're having to explain everything as they go along because they haven't taken the time to develop it. And I'm like, it's clearly written by a bunch of boys. (laughs) Wow. The one that broke the mold for me, and I feel bad having pushed it aside when I was younger because I was an animation snob, is Avatar The Last Airbender. And that is a show that even though it had a bunch of dudes on the production, um, pushed the limits of female character development, yeah. female empowerment. Um, at first, I mean, it even starts off with slight spoiler alert. It's done within like the first couple episodes, but Sokka, the main character is kind of misogynistic and yeah. they shut it down like really hard yeah. and really and, fast. And, you know, and that's and probably the because they, at, at, at some point it probably had some sort of, even if it's all guys like writing it, generally, as long as there's some sort of female input or it, even some consideration for like a female voice, then obviously it takes a different direction, but you can tell when that's lacking. <laughs> like it's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I gotta go guys. Um, yeah. I got things to do. So sorry, it's noon and yeah. No, no, it's is, okay. I, you know, I'd love to continue this conversation. It's really interesting, but <laughs> sorry. No, no, no. We actually, it's a, it's noon and we should all be going anyway. I just yeah. wanted to, uh, Thank everybody so much for joining us today and Yay. diving into our many rabbit holes. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that you know uh, this is a, probably a bigger. Uh, this is obviously a bigger conversation for an, another time that we can certainly get I'm into. Sure, we'll pick it up again. Yeah, absolutely. Brought up tan, and, and we went on a tangent. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I just wanted to. Re- um, I just wanted to remind everybody um, that. Uh, Tomorrow, we're going to be giving away uh, the prize for our two-week build. Um, and if you look below there, trickybricks.com slash two-week vote. That's where you can go and see the six images and vote on them. So please go and do that, and we'll be doing that at the end of tomorrow's show. And don't forget, tomorrow's show, Christopher Coster will be here doing mm-hmm. an intro to BrickLink Studio, which is going to be really great. So if you've ever wanted to do... Uh, uh, anything with a uh, studio now is going to be your chance to, to check out uh, the basics of how to use that. Um, Richard will be gone this week. So I will be joined by a variety of co-hosts, including um, Yano River Blue uh, on one of our days. And I don't know, maybe I can talk Blair into joining me on Wednesday. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, um, Oregon is shutting down. We're here. Woo. Yeah. I know, watched right? that. So, um, but yeah, and thank you. And you know, it's funny. We were talking earlier about like having, I, you know, because I generally, I used to always like to have a subject to talk about on Sundays. 
And I've actually found that our most interesting conversations have come on the days then we where we don't have a specific subject and we just sort of end up on one. Just hang <laughs> out and go where it goes. They're always very fascinating. Um, but uh, anyway, thank you, uh, everybody, so much for joining us. We will be here tomorrow at 10 a.m. with Christopher Coster. Uh, thank you, Holly, Moto, Blair, Cara, everybody for uh, joining in. We hope you have a great day. And uh, don't forget, until next time, you're going to stay stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, wear your mask, get your flu shot, and we will be talking to you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Everyone. Um, oh, it's not going. <laughs> Hooray! Hi, we're still here. <laughs> we're still here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get down here to the goodbye. Everybody's just sort of like wrapping up, and I have no idea what I'm doing here. Oh, I seem to have lost everything that I needed. There we go. All Bye, right, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, Clicky. Really leaving now. Bye, Clicky. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>